Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Alex Ziskind. I teach native script courses on nativescripting.com. In the last video, I showed you how to create a simple backend to use with your native script apps as you're developing them. This video focuses on converting the fetch API calls that you've used in the previous video to use the new or not so new now, the HTTP client in Angular. And there are some gotchas about that that you're gonna wanna know about. So if you haven't seen the previous video, that's okay. Just imagine that you have a backend running to handle your API calls. All right, let's get going. Okay, here we are in the NativeScript app. We have a list of players. And if I tap on one of them, you get the details for each player. Here's the Hello World NativeScript Angular template. But instead of hard coding the football players in the service, I've created a separate little Node Express server that's running in the background. Here it is, it's really simple. In fact, you can check out the previous video that I've done and I'll show you how to put this together. Very quick and easy. Great, so we're gonna be using that. I've already converted the get items function to an observable and that's pretty simple because we have an observable array that we're subscribed to. But when it comes to the details page, we have a few choices and that's where it gets a little bit more hairy. I wanna go over that with you in case you are using Angular. So right now our get item function is being used for the details page. We're getting one single item by ID and we're getting that one player we're using a fetch call. Instead of this fetch, what I wanna do is use the HTTP client that we have here in our service. And we're gonna use get and I'm gonna use the same URL that we did before. There we go. Now get returns an observable. If I hover over that, you can see that it's gonna return an observable. And in fact, I can type that observable because get is a generic function. So I wanna type it as an item and I'm gonna go ahead and return that. So I don't need this fetch call anymore and I need to convert this instead of a promise, this is gonna return an observable of type item. Our service call is done. Let's go to the item detail component, which is now complaining. So what can we do here? Well, in the previous video, what we've done is in the components section, we've converted our public items to an observable. And we just set the items to the get items call that returns an observable. Let's try that here. I'm gonna create this public item dollar observable of type item. And I gotta import observable from RxJS. And I'm gonna set this dot dollar item to the result of that. Now, this is not gonna work because in our template, we are referring to item, but we don't have an item. What we have now is item dollar. So in order to use item dollar, we need to go ahead and subscribe to it because it's an observable. We can't just use it directly. We need to subscribe to it. And we can do that in our template with an async pipe. So there's async item dollar async. Now this is wrong, by the way. I'm just showing this to you as an example of what not to do, but then I'll show you how to do it the right way. I'm gonna save it. Let's take a look at our app. Our app restarts. We're gonna go to a detail page and we get the detail. Everything seems to be working just fine. But I said that was wrong, didn't I? What's wrong with this? It's working just fine. Well, it's working fine because I'm running this server locally and I'm not noticing any delay at all. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce a delay into my server and you'll see what happens. Let's go to the server here. I'm gonna stop the server. And right here on the details page, instead of just returning this, I'm gonna set a timeout for three seconds. And then I'm gonna move this result inside our timeout callback. I need to go ahead and build this, so TSC. Okay, and then I'm gonna start this program up. Let's take a look at the app now. So I'm gonna go to a detail page and we wait for three seconds. Oh, we get five, the ID. We get the player name. Why did they come separately? And why did it take so long? And it's happening again. That's really weird. I'm gonna go to my server.js here I'm gonna put a breakpoint right there in our player details route. And let's go here and tap one of these like messy. Okay, we hit the breakpoint after three seconds. I'm gonna continue. And then we hit the breakpoint again. And then we hit a breakpoint one more time. What is happening here? Well, what's happening is exactly what could happen to you if you're not careful. So here we've subscribed to this observable three times. So we have three subscriptions. Each time you use the async pipe, you're subscribing to the observable. That means that when you subscribe to an observable, you're gonna make the lazy call to the API at that point. So here we're calling the API three times to retrieve that observable item, which is not good. 
So the way to do this is let's go back to our detail component. I shouldn't say the way to do it because there are lots of different ways to do it. But here is a way we could do it. Instead of having this as an observable, I can leave this as item up here and I can subscribe just once. So here I've subscribed to the call after we get the item from the server. And then I set this dot item equals item. And now my template, I could just go back to the way things were before I touched it. So instead of these async pipes, I'm just gonna have item dot. However, this also will not work right away and you'll get an error in fact. So the error is not crashing the app, but it is showing up in the console here. And the reason this is happening is because item is currently not defined and we're asking for its ID, its name, and its role. So the way to do this would be to go to this topmost flex layout and use the ngif directive. Only if in the case where item is defined, that's where we're gonna use its properties. So here we are, I'm gonna tap on one of these. Don't forget to remove the breakpoint from your server code if you already had one there. Otherwise it'll get stuck there in the background and you won't know what's going on. All right, so that's how we convert from a fetch API to an observable pattern to talk to the backend. All right, well, that does it for me today. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to get more videos like this in your inbox. And you can check out the full length courses on nativescripting.com to learn a whole lot of other techniques about native script. And ask me native script related questions on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there. If I answer your question in video format in this channel, you'll get some swag in the mail. All right, see you next time.